senior scientists, welcome to room nine, our region's largest classroom. My name is Mrs. Newby and I teach at Flynn Park Elementary School, which is in the school district of University City. Today I'm gonna to be teaching science for third grade, but like I always say, everyone is welcome to learn with us today and I'm super excited you are here. We've been studying and exploring different animals the past couple weeks. Last week, we were able to interview some animal friends, which was super exciting and very, very fun. This week, I'm a little curious about a little bit some more animals. You won't necessarily be able to interview these animal friends, but I wanna kinda of take a look at a few animals and think what do we notice and wonder about how they live, okay? So I'm going to um, do a quick scavenger hunt with you guys, and I want you guys to take a look at what animals you are seeing, and I want you to think about what do you notice about those certain animals, maybe compared to other animals I'm about to show you, okay? So I hope you guys are ready. <sighs> Let's take a deep breath. Let's go ahead and get our science goggles on. We wanna make sure that we're, we're expert scavenger hunters with this. And again, make sure that you're thinking about what do you notice and wonder. It could be something as simple as, oh, they are a lion or they are this. Um, and this is what they're doing or this is what they normally do. Maybe you know some awesome fun facts about these animals I'm about to show you. So be thinking about it. Talk, talk out loud, maybe tell a friend or a sibling that's in your room watching this with you, but be thinking about it, put those science caps on and those investigative glasses on as well. You ready? Let's get started. So before we continue and move on, I wanna make sure that we have our bodies and our minds ready to be able to focus and get the best learning out of today's lesson. So what I have here is a cool mood meter. So there's different quadrants that you notice. You can either feel pleasant or unpleasant, and you can also feel high energy, really hyper, or low energy. So if you feel the most ready and the most focused and ready to learn, you probably are gonna be in this green area. So give me a thumbs up if you're in the green area. You feel confident, happy, and calm. If you're like, eh, I'm probably a little bit more hyper, I have a lot of energy, but I still am a good, in, a, in a good mood. That's gonna kind of be in this yellow area. So you're gonna still feel really excited. You might feel anxious about something or just really silly and just super goofy. So if you're in there, maybe you can take some deep breaths. You can maybe do a couple jumping jacks to kind of get that energy out. But let's try to kind of get into this green area. So kind of you think of some strategies you can use to get out of here and into here. The other one would be kind of this blue area. You're kind of low energy, you don't have a whole lot of energy, and you're kind of feeling a little bit unpleasant. So you're worried about something, you're sad or lonely about something, or maybe you're just sleepy and tired. So if you're any of these, maybe you can talk to a grown up or just take a nap. So try to think about what you can do to kind of get out of this blue area and kind of reach for this green area. And the last one is red, oh buddy. So you are out of control, you're angry, or you're just super frustrated about something. Now this area here would also be a good time to be able to find a grown up, be able to talk about something, and also think of strategies that you can, you can use to help calm you down and bring you into this green zone or this green area. So some things that you could do is probably Find something that you can squeeze. Maybe you just need to kind of get that frustration out. Um, lots of people love to color or journal or just doodle. So think of some things to kind of get, you, get your mind out of this red area and kind of get into this green one to kind of help you calm down a little bit more and just feel a little bit more confident and calm. So once you find your um, area, your color, try to do those strategies to kind of get you in this green area. If you're in this green area, say, oh yeah. And let's go ahead and get started to jot down these notes and learn more about groups. Okay, so the first animal that I want to show you are these awesome elephants. So think about really quick, what do you notice about these elephants right now, these specific ones? Also, maybe you guys can kind of jot down or shout out a few facts you know about elephants. They're pretty interesting animals. Think about it. Maybe we can jot some things down together after we kind of do a little bit more of our scavenger hunt. So I get I gave the first one away. Let's go ahead and kind of take a look and see. Oh, I saw something orange there. Do you see that? 
Let's go check out what animals these are. What are these guys? Oh, these are giraffes. You got it. So think about, what do you notice about these giraffes? I see four of them. Maybe you know some, some cool facts about them. They have some pretty cool long necks and they got a big tongue too. Okay, let's keep exploring. See if we, oh, I see something. What's this guy? Oh, this is a little cute crab. What do you notice about this crab? And do you know any facts about crabs? He's kind of cute, isn't he? He's all alone, it looks like. Hmm. I wonder why he's all alone. I also saw some things over here in the ocean. Oh my goodness, look at all these cool creatures. I see some fish. There's two of them. They look really happy. We got some dolphins here. Uh-oh. We got a shark, a loner shark here. I wonder what he's about to do. Do you know any facts about any of these creatures? Think about them, jot them down. We're gonna, oh my goodness, that was so fast. That was another one right there. We're gonna go ahead and continue jotting these down, seeing what we notice. What are these guys? Exactly, these are tigers. Wow, there are quite a few of them here. I am seeing six tigers. Do you know any facts about tigers? They're pretty cool cats. What do you notice about the way that they are right now? Pretty cool. Let's continue searching to see if we find any, any other animals. Oh my goodness. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's a rhino. And it looks like it's all by itself. That's interesting. I wonder what he's doing. Do you know any facts about rhinos? Huh. Let's keep going. Let's see. Oh, what are those white things? See some white and black stripes. What are these guys? Zebras. These are pretty cool animals too. What do you notice about these zebras? It looks like two of them are kind of sleeping, huh? Taking a little nap. Do you know any facts about zebras? Okay, so far we've seen quite a few animals. Let's continue see. Oh, I see some. What are these guys in the grass? Oh, we got some gorillas and some chimpanzees. What are you noticing about these animals right now? I'm seeing there's quite a few of them. One of these chimps have a little baby, has a little baby chimp on top. That's so cute. Do you notice any facts about chimps? Do you know any facts about chimps or gorillas? It looks like they kind of like hanging out together, huh? Let's keep going. Uh-oh, what are these? We got a bunch of lions. It's a big group of lions. First thing I'm noticing with these lions is that they're all male because they all have a mane around them. That's interesting. There's so many of them. Do you know any other facts about lions? Maybe you can jot those down. Let's keep going. Let's see. Do we notice any? Oh, what are these? Oh, they're little monkeys. Got some monkeys hanging out on a tree over here. What do you notice about these monkeys? And do you know any facts about monkeys? Jot them down. Let's keep going. Hmm. We've seen so many animals already. I'm seeing something pretty colorful on this tree. What is this? 
It's a cool chameleon. Now, it seems like he's by himself also. Do you know any cool facts about chameleons? These are awesome creatures too, especially with their cool colors. Hmm. Man, what a cool area this is. So many animals to explore and to notice and wonder. And I bet you can tell me so many cool facts about all of these animals. So now that we were able to do our fun, quick scavenger hunt, I hope you guys have some facts, some cool notes about these animals, and maybe some questions about what you noticed or wondered about what you saw based on how these animals were set up. Let's go inside and jot these notes down and maybe we can explore a book to see if we can um, find any new learning from today. I had so much fun exploring and doing that scavenger hunt with you guys outside. It was really cool just to be able to put on our investigative um, goggles and our science caps and just be able to kind of keep our eyes open and see the animals that we saw. Um, and also just be able to spend some time really thinking about these animals. They're very common animals that we've probably seen at zoos or in other books or just learning about them in school. But it's really cool just to be able to spend some time and just in general ask questions or notice some things about them. So I hope you were able to jot down some notes or even think about things that you noticed and wondered during our scavenger hunt. This is the best way that I think um, for me, how I can organize my thoughts whenever I'm exploring and being a scientist. So I just have a column for things that I notice and then I have questions for things that I wonder. So let's go ahead and look into mine. If you wanna jot these down, you can. Um, and maybe you can also share yours as well. So I noticed, first of all, that we saw lots of animals. There were quite a bit animals that we saw during our scavenger hunt, which was pretty cool. It's like the, every time I like would lift my, my camera, it would, you know, another animal would be in the screen. Pretty cool. Another thing that I noticed was that some were alone. So we noticed, I noticed like the poor chameleon was all by himself and the crab and the shark. They were all alone. But there were so many other animals that actually were in groups like the chimpanzees and the gorillas, the lions, the zebras. They were all in groups together. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I noticed that there are quite a few of them kind of huddled together. Another thing I noticed was the habitat that they no normally are found in. So lots of them are, are either found in grasslands or even savannas or forests. So they share similar um, habitats, but we also had like the ocean habitat with those fish, dolphins, and um, that shark. So after I jotted down my noticings, and they can be simple things. If you notice something else, like I also noticed that all the lions were males. And I know usually lions have females and males in there. So you can just jot things down that you noticed that were maybe kind of interesting or things that you just, you know, were able to observe. My questions, the first one I note I asked was, what do each of these animals need to survive? All of these animals have different stories. They all have different lives. They eat different food. They live different places. They have different homes. They act differently. They interact with other animals and other things differently. So what do each of those probably need? It kind of got me wondering. Um, another thing I noticed, or I asked myself, was why do some actually live in groups? So why are there quite a few animals? Now that I think about it, there are so many groups that I that I see whenever I think of certain animals. Um, it's very rare seeing a gorilla just by himself. He's usually close by with another group of gorillas. Um, same thing with lions. You always see um, lions are always together. Okay, so it kind of got me thinking too, why do they live in groups? Is it necessary? Do they do that out of comfort because they have to or what? Uh, and the last question I asked was, what other animals live in groups? Since all the ones that we, not all, but most of the ones that we notice in our scavenger hunt do live in groups, are there any others or are those the only ones that live in groups? So I was able to find a really cool book that kind of helps answer my questions here towards the bottom. 
Um, and I would like to read it so that we can see if we can answer these questions. So it is called Animals That Live in Social Groups. It's kind of cool. Look at the little monkeys. Um, this is written by Bobby Kalman and it's through Crabtree Publishing. Um, this is, do you guys know what genre this is? Yep, it is nonfiction. It is going to teach us facts about animals that live in social groups. So, of course, nonfiction books always have a table of contents towards the front, and it kind of tells you what information on each page you're going to get. I'm not going to read all of it because I would not have time for it, but I am going to, I bookmark a few of the pages that we're going to read. So we're going to read a few of them. We're going to learn about a few um, groups of animals that live in social groups so that we can kind of find out why. What are the, what are the reasons why? Um, the intro page is always, I think, the most important. No matter what nonfiction book you are reading, it's important to read the introduction because it kind of gives you an idea of what you're going to learn in the book. So the first page is called, What are Social Groups? I think that's the number one thing we need to know is, what are they? Let's find out. Animals must adapt in order to stay alive. One of the most helpful adaptations that animals have made is living in social groups. Animals that live in social groups help one another find food, care for their babies, and defend against predators. That's interesting. I feel like that already answered this question right here. Why do some live in groups? I think those three reasons are perfect reasons to explain. They do that to find food, care for their babies, and defend against predators. And the word predator just means other animals that hunt for that specific type of animal. This um, subheading is called big and small. Small groups that include a mother, father, and their young are, call are called nuclear families. Other families are made up of one male, several females, and their babies. Bigger family groups may include many female and their young. Many females and their young. Big social groups often contain several families. So there's different kinds of social groups. There isn't just one type. And there's also really cool different names of social groups. For example, um, bab uh, baboons. Their group is called a band. Lemurs have, they're called conspiracies. That's kind of cool. Penguins are called colonies and there's just so many. Um, one that I think is pretty funny is the giraffes. Their social group is called, let's find out. Um, it is called, they're called towers. And I think that's really cool because they have such long necks. So if you say, oh, there's a tower of giraffes then that's, that means there's a group of giraffes. Okay, the first one I'd like to go um, and learn about, and the reason why is because I didn't see these out in our scavenger hunt, so I want to kind of learn more about these animals. So they're called wolves. So wolf pack is the first page. Wolves live in social groups called packs, which are made up of parents, grandparents, offspring, siblings, aunts, uncles, and sometimes wolves from other packs. Each pack has a territory with enough fresh water and food for the pack. If members live together and work as a team to hunt animals to eat, the mother and father are the leaders of the pack. They are called the alpha wolves and are the only ones that make babies. After the alphas, Wolves second in command are called betas, followed by mid-ranking wolves, and finally the omegas. This caption here says, the wolves on these pages are gray wolves. Other kinds of wolves are red wolves and Ethiopian wolves. So there's even different kinds of wolves. It's kind of cool how they have like a different name for each like rank or level of, of wolf. Mother and pups. A mother wolf gives birth to a litter of four to seven pups. She hides the pups in a den for about one month. The pups are safe from predators there. All of the wolves in a pack help take care of the pups, just like one of the reasons we met that was mentioned in the introduction page. Pretty cool. When the pups are very small, other pack members bring food to their mother so she does not have to leave the den. So they're super helpful even serving them and giving them food. 
These young pups are in a den with their mother. They leave the den for short periods to look around and play. A mother wolf is nursing her, her pups. When the pups are ready to leave the den, they join the pack and learn how to hunt with other wolves. So you can already see how well they work together as a group. Wolf communication. Well, of course, because if you're part of a group, you have to find a way to communicate, right? Wolves communicate and share knowledge with one another. Older wolves teach younger wolves how to mark their territories, keep in touch with one another, and hunt with the pack. Wolves howl to let members of their pack know where they are. So anytime you hear howling, it's wolves communicating with one another, saying, hey, I'm over here. <laughs> wolves mark their territory. Do you know how? With their urine. Ooh. When wolves from other packs smell these scents, they know they cannot live or hunt in that area. That's kind of respectful too. They kind of know like, hey, this belongs to someone else. I smell their urine and they go away. It's kind of funny. Wolves bare their teeth when they are angry. Dominant wolves show the pack that they are in charge by carrying their tails high or holding other wolves beneath them. Weaker wolves show submission by lying down or holding their tails between their legs. That's kind of cool. So respect is big with wolves. Pretty neat. Okay. Let's also take a look at some gorillas. We had some gorillas in our scavenger hunt. This is called Gorilla Troops. Like chimpanzees, gorillas are great apes. There are Eastern and Western gorillas. Eastern lowland gorillas and mountain gorillas belong to the Eastern group. Western lowland gorillas and cross river gorillas belong to the Western group. All gorillas are endangered. That means they're not quite extinct, but they're kind of close to it. The numbers of gorillas are decreasing because they're either getting hunted, killed, or just dying out. So there's not very many of them. Troop members. Gorilla troops are made up of one adult male or silverback, several females, and they're young. The silverback makes decisions for his troops, his troop members leads them to food and protects them. Younger males known as blackbacks help the silverback protect the females and babies of the troop. That's so cool. So they're all about protection. So we got a silverback here. He's, he's the big dog or the big gorilla, I would say. He is in charge. He makes all the decisions. He tells them where they're gonna live. He helps them find food and protects them especially. So that's pretty cool. Right here it says, when a silverback feels threatened by an attacker, he pounds his chest, makes loud sounds, and throws plants at his enemy. A gorilla mother has only three babies in her lifetime, so not many new gorillas are born. The mother takes care, good care of their babies. They nurse them for up to four years. So they're also really, really cool parents. So... Gorillas are definitely a cool social group that I am super interested in. Right here it says, gorillas can catch the same disease as humans, so people must keep a safe distance from these gorillas. When gorillas catch human diseases, their bodies cannot fight them and many die. That's kind of interesting. So we have to make sure that we're helping protect them, but also not being as close or near to them because we don't want to make them sick. Male gorillas have weak social bonds with one another. They leave their groups when they are about 11 years old. They find female partners, make babies, and form new family groups. So the males aren't really close to one another, but they make sure that to, to try to make their own and create their own groups. So the last social group, now you're probably gonna be pretty surprised, that I wanna show you are your social groups. Humans also have social groups, of course. Where we communicate all the time. Imagine not being around any groups of people. Animal social groups are organized in different ways. Some have male leaders. Other groups are made up mainly of females. 
Social animals communicate using sounds, body language, facial expressions, and hand signals. They teach their offspring in different ways too. People are social too. People also have social groups. Our social groups are similar to the for to those of animals. Like animal social groups, our groups also have special names. To which of these social groups do you belong? Family clans, school clubs, dance troops, religious congregations, sports teams, cultural groups, and music bands. There's so many different groups that we even have as humans. It's pretty cool. So we've learned so much about all of these animals, and I think we definitely answered our questions. And there are still so many other animals that live in social groups. This book talks about penguins. Penguins definitely live in social groups. We also know that meerkats and prairie dogs live in social groups. Um, this book also talks about lemurs. And we have a page about chimpanzees, baboons, they live in bands. Um, we talked about lions, dolphins also live in groups, and elephants. So this book explains all of those. If you're super interested in reading more about these social groups, definitely grab this book from the library um, or maybe purchase it online. But it's a pretty cool book. And it's really cool just to be able to, to realize and understand that there, there are social groups, not just within humans, but with other animals. They need each other. They can't, a lot of them can't live by themselves. Chameleons, for example, they're good to be by themselves. They don't really socialize. They don't need other chameleons. But there's so many different animals that love to communicate and talk and be around others that are like them, which is really cool. So I hope you're able to explore more about social groups and other animals that live in, in different groups and how they communicate, how, how, how they live. I hope you had fun um, with our activity today and learning more about social groups, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.